Hi third graders, today I'm going to show you how to create a value scale landscape similar to what we practiced um, with our paint and our planning paper before. Um, however, we're going to be using watercolor paper today um, in order to create a value scale background um, that ranges all the way from the tints, which is your color mixed with white, down into the shades, which is your color mixed with black or your color mixed with a darker color like red, purple, or blue. Um, now the main thing is you wanna start with your four lines, one, two, three, four, which divides the space into five sections. And then you range from the sky down to the darkest value. Now, watercolor happens in layers. So this is just the first layer. The best part about watercolor is we can keep working on it and keep editing that paint and adding to it after we've already started. It's a little bit harder to edit something with the tempera paint that we have. It's easier to edit a watercolor and add layers and add detail on top um, the next week. So we are gonna be given a watercolor paper. This paper is really nice and thick. It's made specifically for watercolor. So the first thing you're gonna do is look at your plan. So let's pretend this is my plan since it's right in front of me and I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So you're gonna look at your plan you're going to get out a pencil. I'm using a darker pencil so that you can see it. If I can't see it very well, we're gonna switch to black marker so you can see it. I'm gonna start by sketching the lines. You don't wanna see the lines. You don't want them to be dark. I'm making my dark so you, mine dark so you can see it. You just wanna sketch them very lightly. So I'm gonna first start by deciding if my paper is going to be, the orientation is going to be portrait. Now you can do a landscape this way if you want or landscape. This one is called landscape. It's great for landscapes because it shows the wideness of the land, but you could do it either way. Just to show you another example, I'll turn, it, I'll turn mine so that you can see. I'm gonna start with this cityscape line at the top. Remember, you could have done a cityscape, a landscape with more hills and plains, a mountainscape, um, a cityscape, a landscape, or a mountainscape. Some of you even chose to do seascapes. As long as you have these four lines to divide up your space, to create space, we're good to go to start. Now, this part is really dark, but it's our shade, it's our foreground. We have our foreground, middle ground, and background. It is not yet my silhouette. My silhouette will be fully black. So I have my lines there first to divide up my space, four lines. I'm gonna start with my paintbrush, you could use the medium fluffy or the um, small to get this area started. Now, I'm starting by putting some water at the top just to get it, the paper activated. You don't have to do this for every layer, but I'm going to do it here because I'm working really lightly, so I want it to be really watery. Now, you could either use white mixed with your color here, or you could just water down your color a lot. So if I'm doing my color as, um, let's do a different color than orange since you see the orange one here. Let's say I'm doing violet or purple. Um, you can start by putting white down. Now the white is an off white, so that's gonna make your color a little different. That's up to you if you use the white or if you just use water to make it lighter. So this is your sky. It's gonna be very, very light. So I could get a tiny drop of my color, and you can think of the sky. Maybe you paint really light clouds up here in your color by blotting your brush like this. That's one of the most fun thing to do with watercolor paper is paint little clouds. And I'm gonna bring you in closer here. Paint little clouds by blotting your brush a little bit on the page. Blot, 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 blot. So I'm gonna start with that. Think of the mood in your setting. Now the next layer, I'm gonna make a little darker. So you, again, you can water it down if you want to spread the color easier. You don't have to, but it will help you spread easier. So I'm gonna start, start watering it down. Then I'm gonna start my next layer, which is gonna be a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of my paint and I'm gonna start light. You can always make it darker. It's hard to pull away color or to make it get lighter once it gets darker. So I'm gonna start filling this in. Now, I'm 
I'm going to give you a tip here. If you do happen to make your color too dark, let's say, oh no, I made it too dark. You can get some water on your brush, just water, clean it off, and you can pull the color away or just use some water to blend it in. So that's the fun thing about watercolor. It's ever changing. Um, you can edit it as you go. Now I'm going to make the next layer by making it a little darker. How do I make it darker? Just wiggle my brush into the paint more and use less water. So this time I'm actually just going to start with just the color. I didn't water it down because watering it down made it lighter already. So I'm gonna start with just this color. Now maybe you get a little creative. Maybe I have this purple and this is monochromatic, but maybe I mix in a little bit of another color to create a more creative um, color here of the purple. Some of the watercolors have different types of the color. Purple doesn't really, it has violet, but you could mix a little bit of the violet in is my point to make it a different type of that color. So it doesn't have to be the same exact type of purple. It could just be a monochromatic varied purple scape. Now I'm going to move to the next one. This is going to get a little bit darker. Things can get darker by, again, wiggling your brush even more. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Or, see how it's even darker now? Or you can um, mix in a little bit of black. So um, I started here with my color with just regular, but that was this section. So I might mix in a tiny bit of black, or maybe a tiny bit of dark blue to make it even darker. You just want it, the value to change as you go. Now, if you see here, this is bleeding. It's called into the next level. We don't want that. So I'm going to make sure to go back over it and make sure these lines are straight. If that happens, it's okay. You can edit it, but just watch it when you're doing two sections next to each other in a row. So I'm going to work it back into these layers later, but this is just the start to the value. So I do want to also think about um, this edge being a little bit darker, and I can make it darker towards the top of this edge and get lighter as it fades down. That's another creative thing you could do. I can do the same thing in my sky. I can make the sky a little bit just darker at the top. It's called the dome effect. It makes it look like it's fading towards the bottom to make it look more realistic. We see that happen in pictures and photographs. So this is still the lightest section, but it gets a little bit darker towards the top of that sky. And I'm gonna get a little bit of my violet here and put a little bit more of that cloud back in here. So this is still a light area up at the top, but it's getting lighter as we go down. Lighter, darker, darker. I could still make this a little darker by mixing in some black or maybe some dark blue. I'll grab some blue because if you mix blue and purple, it's just going to become a bluish purple. It's still going to be purple. So if you know your color wheel, you can mix colors in that are next to it. For example, maybe you choose yellow, but you mix in a little bit of the orange to make it yellow orange. It's still a type of yellow. So I'm mixing this in to edit that. And now I'm going to go to the next one, which is going to be a lot darker. So I need to make this the darkest value. I'm going to start by not putting water to make it dark first. The water lightens it up. I'm going to really wiggle my brush. I'm not going to pick this up off the tray because it's going to get all over my fingers and the table and no one can share. So I'm going to leave this on the tray while I wiggle it. And then I'm going to mix in either dark blue or black even more at the bottom here. Maybe I try to mix in red and see if it gets darker because then it would be red violet. If something's next to it on the wheel, you can mix it in. So I'm going to make this a little darker with black. These edges are a little bit soft because it's watery. We can wait for it to dry and then next time harden those edges up a little bit um, with more of a dry brush. But this is going to be really watery and soft because it's wet, still wet. So we want to make sure this is the lightest one at the top. It's mostly white there, but you can add some sky details. I'm going to work my way down and make it get darker and darker and darker. Um, if, if you make a mistake or the color bleeds, you can pull it by getting your brush cleaned off like I just did and then pulling it with just water to clean it up, it's called. 
and then I'll clean it. Don't do too much or the paper is going to start to lip, rip like mine just did. I went a little, it's called overworking the paper. All right, so I'm going all the way down here. I'm going to clean up this detail later when it's dry. It'll be called dry brush. But for now, I'm going to carefully clean up that line with my brush so it gets from light to medium to dark to darker. I could even darken up some of this area down here with some more blue to show that it's getting even darker down towards the bottom. So your layers can have value changes within them as well. It's just I am looking for those value changes from lightest, medium, um, mostly white, light, medium, darker, darker. So I'm going to make this one a little bit darker here. And then next time we can add more layers and more details. But first you can just see that gradual value change. And later we will also add our silhouette. So this is my value scale landscape to start. Um, I did my paper up and down. Are you going to do yours side to side? You can see this done in two different colors, the same scape, just two different colors and paper orientations. Have a wonderful painting class and I'll see you next time.